worst experience I've ever had on a mountain. That work okay? Yeah. Who am I? Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to answer that. Um, so my name's Callum Townsend. Uh, I'm somebody who is very obsessed with exercise. I, don't, I actually don't know what I would say like that I am. I don't really have like a label for myself because I don't really fit under one sort of umbrella. Um, I guess. My name's Callum Townsend and I'm an ultra endurance athlete. What am I to Callum? Yeah. I'm his running friend. <laughs> and how did you meet Callum? How did I meet Callum? Oh, so... How did I meet Callum? I think the first time I met Callum, I actually slept with Callum. Um, what we did, um, I know someone called Liam, and he was he was doing Manchester Marathon with me, but he was like, oh, I've got me, I've got my friend, he wants to come, he's really good at running, and etc etc and he said I've booked an hotel so we're all staying in that then when, when we turned up at the hotel um, obviously he gets in this double bed and then there's only one more bed and it's like a single bed he's like yeah you two are in that so the first time I met Callum like we both top well we didn't top and tail I think we just slept the same way but then it's been a regular occurrence since to be honest come on you go first so Callum is a very I guess I feel like a very gregarious character um, with in regards to obviously his um, sport um, I'd often call him you know, our, his, our adrenaline seeking son yeah I think I think he's always he's always um, strived for uh, for doing something a little bit different he's always strived for doing the, the best he could at stuff um, I guess ever since he was a kid, when he was at school in Australia, um, they had uh, one particular thing was they had a, a cross country competition. So you went from school to uh, the next level and to the regionals, and, to, and, and the last one was called uh, zones. And you got a sweatshirt for doing it. And his oh, his only goal in mind was to get this sweatshirt so he could wear the sweatshirt for school. His Sydney West sweatshirt. And in the end, he got it, and he was he was medal with it. Was absolutely met up with it, and I think that that kind of determination, I think certainly with the with getting into the fire service, um, and then when it's come to you know he played he played football for a while, he played cricket for a while, um, he turned his hand to rugby league, um, and one of the things that I, I coached him when we were playing football, um, and one of the things when <laughs> when your dad's the coach is that your kid has to be behaving better than everybody else's kid and has to do things, so I don't want to have to tell my kid off or, or to be picking on my kid. So I said, mate, just try and be at the front of the training, try and do what you're asked to do, try and set an example to the other kids. And I think that that really went through his whole sporting career. Um, I stopped coaching when he went to rugby league, but when I used to go and watch him training, he was the first in training every night and he put, all, he, he put his heart and soul into it. And every time you play the game, he put his heart and soul into the game. And that's really, really carried on through through a lot of what he's done. He's a very determined character, um, to the point of distraction sometimes. <laughs> Do I say my name? <laughs> so, um, I'm Cameron, Callum's girlfriend. So we've been together for nearly nine years. Other people seem to think that I'm like a running widow. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually not. Um, he gets up and does his runs at like three in the morning, four in the morning, so he'll be finished his training before I even wake up and then he'll be running straight after work when I'm still working. So he kind of fits into our schedule really. He's never had to cancel any of our plans and we still go on weekends away, we still go on holidays and we still eat together every night and chat to each other every day. So yeah, I'm supportive of it. I like that he does it and I want him to carry on doing it and reach his potential. So I started playing sport when I was a kid um, and throughout sport I always felt like I was more individualistic so I was like more focused on my individual training outside of the sports than I was the actual team sport itself. Um, don't get me wrong I loved the camaraderie and the team sport and like everything that came with being in a team but I was very obsessed with like going and doing hill sprints on my days off from rugby or football or um, 
whatever I, whatever sport I was training for, I loved going and doing my own thing outside of that. So then, off the back of that, I got into running. I got into cross country running in Australia. When I started cross country running, I got quite good at it. Um, I wasn't good at all in the first place. So then, to then, um, like to get better at it, I went out more and more and more and got addicted to that sort of progression of it. Um, and then years and years and years went on um, and eventually stepped into triathlon. Um, after I stepped into triathlon, I did my first sprint triathlon and already had an Ironman booked at that point um, because I just wanted to test that side of my endurance. Um, I didn't know that if, if, if I could even like cope with that side of um, sport and going for that long and that distance and then anyway progressed through doing like um, sprint triathlon standard distance triathlon half Ironman and then did an Ironman all within probably I don't know a few months of each other maybe six months so when I decided that I'd do it when I decided that I was doing it I couldn't like I, I hadn't even trained for a sprint triathlon um, and then just went straight into like my first season went into Ironman I feel like what I always do with like a lot of the things that I um, want to achieve in my life is like I'll feel that there's like a, a buy-in to be able to call myself a certain thing. So like when I wanted to be a triathlete, I didn't feel like I could become a triathlete until I did an Ironman. So the Ironman to me was like the first thing that I had to do because I wasn't a triathlete until I'd done an Ironman. I could do I could do a hundred sprint triathlons, but it wasn't my ticket into the triathlon world i felt like i had to do an ironman to become a triathlete so after doing my first ironman got addicted to that sort of feeling of ultra endurance or, or just endurance in general um, and then started doing loads of different things in the lead up to the next triathlon season then covid hit because covid hit um, i started doing a few little silly challenges um, because i didn't have any races to target so i everested my local hill so i rode up and down the same hill 118 times um, I think it took me like it was 17 hours in total 14 hours riding time um, and that was the longest thing that I'd done at that point um, I'd never pushed I think it, well yeah I, I'd not pushed any further than like my Ironman took me 12 hours so I'd never done anything over 12 hours before um, then off the back of that I did a 24 hour ride on a turbo trainer and again loved I loved being like, I loved being on my turbo trainer throughout the night, exercising throughout the night and like continuing on when I knew that I should be in bed. Um, that was something that I got quite a bit of a buzz off. So then ever since then, I'd say that I've been craving doing something like that again. Um, the season after, um, like triathlon was back on the map. Um, I did another Ironman, again, loved it. Uh, but then Bob Graham is something that um, has been on the cards for years. I watched Johnny do it. We'd had the plan to do it together. Um, he talked about it and I had said that I wanted to do it with him and we both had this plan but then I got into the fire service and then that year because I was training for the fire service from January to like March or whatever it was, um, April time, I just didn't have the time to commit to be able, to be able being able to train for that. Um, so didn't end up doing it the year that he did it and then when I went and supported him on leg five I was just extremely jealous and watching him climb up the steps was like the best thing that I'd ever seen so ever since that I knew that this was on the cards it had to happen take us through the Bob Graham round what is it so it's um, an event that is completely self-led um, you've got to have support on every single leg, so there's five legs. Um, so, but apart from the support that is provided by yourself, um, all the logistics and everything are managed by you. So you literally just sign up for an attempt online um, on the Bob Graham Club website. Um, and yeah, you, so yeah, so you, you, you register your attempt date, your time, and whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise, um, I'm going clockwise, don't know why, it just seemed like the most normal thing to do to me. Um, and then off the back of that, you've got to organise everybody that gets involved with it. Um, you've got to have someone witness every single summit of the 42 peaks that you do have to summit um, throughout your round. So in summary, it's a 24 hour, uh, 
sub 24 hours so it has to be under 24 hours in order to have a ratified round which means that you get accepted into the Bob Graham Club um, so it's a 24 hour event or a sub 24 hour event um, covering 66 miles if you choose the lines absolutely perfectly and something 42 fells in a Lake District. Um, I think the elevation is just short of the, the, the the elevation is just short of the elevation of Everest. So it's yeah, just over 8,000 metres. And less people have done the Bob Graham round than have summited Everest. And how do you prepare for something like this? So. My preparation has probably been um, slightly unconventional compared to most. Um, I'm not the type of person who spends years and years and years training for something, wanting to do it, not doing it. Like the second that I see someone who's got something that I want, I just want, I will just do whatever it takes to get to that thing as quickly as possible. Um, so I wanted to be an Ironman, so I did an Ironman. Um, like I want to do Bob Graham, so I'm doing Bob Graham. That's like as simple as it is for me. So the. The training that I've done in the lead up to it, with the endurance background that I've got, having completed a couple of Ironmans and done a bunch of other different things, spending like a long amount of time exercising just week to week for the past however many years, I knew that I had the base to build off um, without having to spend years of my life in preparation for it. So I was training for London Marathon this year and part of my prep for that was to do a lot of long distance mileage throughout the week. Um, so I was running upwards of 70, 80, 90, 100 miles a week um, in prep for London. And it wasn't necessarily just in prep for London, I was running 100 miles a week so that I knew that I could run 100 miles in a week um, consistently. And I knew that my legs were conditioned to that so that off the back of London I recovered quicker because it was only a short amount of time between finishing London and then having a bob attempt. Because of that, it was a little bit, it has been a little bit unconventional, but the way that you prep for it realistically is getting a lot of miles in on the feet, um, a lot of elevation, a lot of vertical gain. Um, so like throughout the week now, I'll just spend most of my time going up and down the same hill um, in Witten, in Billings Woods, Darwin Tower, Darwin Moors, and then obviously the lakes itself, um, just, just going up as many hills as possible throughout the week, getting as much time on your feet and elevation in throughout the week um, is the only way really to prep for it. Um, and then obviously just like the, the years in the past of like um, mental endurance have been the prep that I've needed to know that like 12 hours in I'm not going to crumble because I know what that takes. 14 hours in I know what it takes, 15 hours in, 24 hours in I know what it takes to be there and to do that. So. I know that I'm mentally prepped for it. Um, it's just about turning up on the day now. I'd say it's definitely very spiritual. You know how many people have also trodden on the path that you're trotting on, and everyone throughout that has left a certain part of them out there on the mountains, um, and then also gained a certain part of them they probably didn't have prior to doing a Bob Graham round. That spiritual journey that you likely will go on, especially when it's like early hours of the morning and you're summiting a mountain at 3 a.m. and the sun's just coming up, and you've been out there already for however long you've been out there and you're in a little bit of a delirious state it will show itself the mountains will show themselves to you a little bit differently than they would do on any other occasion so yeah i think it definitely does have a bit of a spiritual aspect to it you've done quite a lot in your life what would you say some of your greatest achievements? Um, I'd say that this is like quite, um, I, I don't know, like maybe a little bit like 
Anyway, I'm just going to say it. I'd say that my relationship is probably my greatest achievement. Um, having been someone that was quite aware of himself for years and years, years and years and years as a child, I knew how particular I was about certain things. I knew how intolerant I was of certain people, just people in general. So the thought of being 24 and having spent nine years in a relationship with someone is probably like the most like um, like incongruent thing that I could possibly think of if you'd have told me that like when I was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old. There's been obviously rough patches to that, but like they've all usually been because of me. So it's just been a massive learning experience and I would say that like the it, it has to be my it has to be my biggest achievement because it's come with the most amount of sacrifice, the most amount of hardship, the most amount of endurance, and more than any of this that like I choose to do, like that is self led. The amount of emotion that you've got to learn to deal with, having made the choice to be with someone for such a long period of time from a young age as well, and like maturing together and growing together and learning together and doing everything that we've done together. Um, yeah, that, that, it just 100% is my biggest achievement um, and it will be for the rest of my life. Nothing that I ever do will top the fact that even if it was to all end tomorrow because I made a silly mistake or do something stupid, it will always be the biggest achievement of my life, being with a girl like Cameron for nine years or just short of. Um, so I'd say that's my biggest achievement. In terms of physicality, I'd probably say that um, I'd say that Ironman probably is my biggest achievement. Ironman 2022, um, managing to finish in the top 20 um, and completing it in 10 and a half hours is, is something that I'm quite proud of. Two and a half hour marathon, I'd say is close to second to that. Um, but I think Bob will probably top, both, will definitely top both of them um, because it just takes a hell of a lot more than for me personally, it takes a hell of a lot more to do what I'm embarking on now than it did to do them two things. What inspired you to do it? The thing that put it in my head was Johnny. So Johnny, my running partner, put it in my head years ago um, as sort of something that he had on his cards. His dad had done it. Um, and I think that is probably what paid into the fact that he wanted to do it himself. Um, so ever since him sort of like putting the idea in my head, um, it's always been there. But like I said, I didn't know whether like whether I was going to do it, when I was going to do it, like um, what it looked like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then seeing Johnny do it and supporting him was 100% the thing that inspired me to do it. So when I ran into Keswick with Johnny, um, and there was like a group of I think there was maybe three or four of us that had supported him on leg five, and we ran into Keswick, um, and it was a nice sunny afternoon, and there was loads of people around clapping, supporting. And as Johnny ran up the steps, we just sort of like dispersed and it felt like he descended into like a God realm and we were just staying as like mere mortals. <laughs> it's the type of stuff I like to hear. He also put, see you in hell tomorrow, you mad man. I'm excited for Saturday, so privileged to be doing this with you. <laughs> he's just like, he just loves it, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, did Ben Johnson just put, you good? Question mark. <laughs> And then I put, I put, 
I thought, yeah, I'll go by and then he put down fuck as well. We were sat in that cafe probably like up until an hour before, drinking a coffee, and like we were all just chatting about stuff that like wasn't even like relevant to running. We were talking about all sorts of other stuff. And then I just had this moment where I sat there and thought, right, like, I should be in my room right now, listening to music, like, getting in the zone. And, you know what I mean? And I, I shit myself and I was like, right, I've got to go. And then in the room, I don't know if you noticed, but I was like panicking a bit because I thought, I was, I was like, oh my God, like, we've got like barely any time. And then I thought, I've not even talked to Josh. I didn't even know if Josh was in Keswick and he's the guy who supported me on leg one. I thought I definitely need to message him. So then I messaged him quickly, like as I was getting my pack ready, I was like, Josh, are you in Keswick, mate? Like, where are you? What's going on? And then I thought, what am I gonna do if he's not there? Do you know what I mean? It just, but then, like, what? Yeah, you just set off at six o'clock because who cares? Do you know what I mean? panicking about whether I've got everything and if I'm all good to go. It's called like the Golden Lion or something, isn't it? That that ginnel, like there's a pub there, and we ran a little bit past that. Then we came back on ourselves. Then we went down there, and then. We went about another 50 meters, and obviously you'd like ran with me a bit, and then you were gone, and then and then everyone was gone, then and we knew we had no eyes on us, and it was just like, all right, I can chill now. And then Josh was like, right, it's a left up here, and then we like like half went left, and we went, actually no, it's not, and then we ran off somewhere else, and I was like, Josh, do you know where you're going? You know, this, this like gusty behavior, it's obviously not like, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna, you know, I, I don't know, I've got lucky or something. I just thought, right, cool, it's not gonna happen. And then as soon as we crested, oh my God, it was like, it was ridiculous. Like we, we, we didn't even, we didn't even have a minute to like look at each other. We just like immediately just like put our hoods up because it started raining a little bit as well. Um, as soon as we got on the top, it was, just, it was just like you'd entered like a different planet. Tell me where it's really boggy. The gusts were probably like upwards of 65, 70 miles an hour, which were like, it felt like someone was smacking you in the face, or, but the whole body, you know what I mean? Like it was gonna like just body slam you off the mountain.
on this night because because it was darker. And you couldn't, it, like you couldn't see much because of the clag. The light was fine, but you couldn't see much because of the clag. We committed to like the wrong route at, at one point and like started like dipping in between like two sort of ridges and then you were just on like a bit of like a, a steep slope that had no traction on it which was obviously we just couldn't get down there. Yo! I was buzzing. Do you remember what you said to Cam? I felt fucking fantastic or something yes. like that. <laughs> Beyond me and Johnny weren't speaking as much as we were, like as me and Josh were. Johnny, it wasn't Johnny's fault. He was just focusing on Nav and getting us where we needed to be. But it just all went a little bit more like um, subdued. It was like somehow we both knew what was about to happen, but like we weren't speaking about it, we didn't really know. It just sort of like went, it took a different turn. We, we did great dodge, no problem. Then as it started to go quite dark, the weather started to open, so the rain started, the wind started to pick up. Um, and then from that point on, it was just like absolutely horrendous. Was it? So yeah, it was just, it became very, like you say, serious, like, and you, you had to sort of just like, conserve every bit of energy you had, so you couldn't really speak to each other. You just had to focus on what the job was at hand. <laughs> Not get lost at all. What? Not get lost at all. I don't even know how we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me I do this. I don't even know how we got here, ask him. I don't know how we nap on it, just couldn't see anything, it were horrendous. Like, I can't even fucking see it up straight. There he is. Fucking hell mate, that weather up there. Horrendous. Right. 
Worst experience I've ever had on a mountain. <sighs> you could see, I didn't know this until my mum told me before, but um, Johnny's dad was shining a head torch or a lamp or something, wasn't he? Up to the, like, the face of it. Yeah, yeah, well, he is. He's done it and he's, he's supported loads of them. So, but, so as he was doing that, I, I, I could see it was like a lighthouse. I was like buzzing that I'd actually got to where I needed to get to and that we were on the way to that place. But then I was like heartbroken at the fact that I knew that I was gonna have about five minutes and then I just had to set off again into this night again. Do you know what I mean? Back up to these mountains. And then knowing that I'm going up the, the tallest mountain in England, like again, would never phase me. Not asked, not bothered. It, it is what it is. It doesn't take a lot out of me physically, but knowing what the conditions were like up Helvellyn, and then you're gonna add like another 100 meters of elevation on top of that. And, and you're up like Lord's Rake as well, which is like an absolutely like, well, it's not that bad, but it's technical. It's very technical. So being in them conditions, oh, I just couldn't think of anything worse. You get the scarf down, you go down the middle Yeah. Yeah, and then you can watch your legs on the side. Are you not up I, I couldn't look at anyone in the eyes. So like, I couldn't look at Cam in the eyes. I couldn't look at my dad in the eyes. I couldn't really look at anyone properly because I thought if I look at you, like I'll, I'll, I'll be too soft. Do you know what I mean? I need, I need to just like compartmentalize. <laughs> you... Yeah, you went to give me a hug, then you're like, no, get off, get off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So leg three was like, so Johnny and Jordan, obviously like two big, two big builders. Yeah, like they were just like on it, like straight away. They'd, they'd been up and they'd wrecked that first section. It was then on Johnny and Jordan to then get me through that section, um, which like, so on a good day, I'd have definitely been able to nav myself around there. Like, so it wouldn't have even been on Johnny and Jordan and I'd have done it. But the fact that I was in that state of sort of like, uh, just like full focus on just, just not stopping. I just needed to move forward. I needed to move in a forward direction. The start of the leg, we marched up the first climb. It's dead steep, got up onto the top. So you do like, I think it's steel fell. Um, then there's quite a few that like you tick off in that first little section and they're all quite lowland, they're all like about 700 meters, something like that. So you're not exposed, it's quite a big open area, you're shielded from a lot of the mountains around you. Um, so for the first like, first good amount of time, I'd say maybe like an hour or an hour and a half, there wasn't really any issues. Um, they were both sort of like, uh, one was at the front, one was at the back, and they were just like like guiding me through like every section, kept checking on me, kept feeding me, it was all, all really good. That, like. It was mint, they were both like, it was like a well orchestrated like um, situation and it was really good having two of them there. Um, one of them would choose one path and see if that was the right path to take, another would choose another and be like, no, I'll come this way. Um, they both had head torches on, I had a head torch and then they also had a handheld torch that they were using. It was all like absolutely mega, really good, bang on, couldn't have asked for anything more. We were trying to claw back time on a sub 20 hour schedule because I told them that I wanted under 20 hours. So I told them I needed to be running like, I think it was about like 18, 19 minutes a mile. And I said to him a few times, lad, just sack that off. I'm not bothered anymore. I don't care about sub 20 hours. I just need to get around this this thing because like sub 20 has gone out the window in my opinion. Like I'm not even bothered about that. We just we just need to finish, mate. That's all we're bothered about. Rain came in, wind came in. So the conditions pretty much turned back into what they were for leg two. 
and we weren't even halfway through this leg at this point so you knew that you had another like three four if not five hours in them conditions um, which was like just soul destroying at that point Every section that we could run, we would run. Um, and then like, if we needed to walk, we'd walk. But I just realized how much leg two had taken out of me because I would always be able to run them sections no matter how like spent I am. And I was just, my head had gone, like not, not gone in a sense of like, uh, I'd lost sense of purpose or anything, but I'd lost like the ability to, uh, my body just wanted to just focus on like staying warm, not dying. So like the, the thought of like running, like it wasn't happening, you know what I mean? I just, every time I started running, it just felt very unnatural. I was watching the time tick over on my watch and I'm thinking, so it started to get to a point where I knew that the boys were gonna be arriving in um, Wasdale at the checkpoint at the time that I told them on a 19 hour schedule. And I was good. I was like, I hadn't even like started the big section yet, and I thought, oh my god, like we are so far behind. And that, like even like even just in everyday life, if you know someone's sat waiting for you, it get, it makes you feel so late, and like it gives you that that angst, doesn't it? And um, so having it when you know that like it's going to take you however many hours, and you know that they're sat in Wasdale and they're expecting you and waiting for you, and you can't communicate with them. It was just that added like an extra element of stress to it. Then we, we dropped down so far, um, and then whilst they like appeared, you, you could see whilst water, um, and I thought, oh my God, man, no way, and I could see the car park and stuff. It was so far beneath us, like, it was like thousands of meters away, like, but you could see it, and I thought, oh my God, wow, like, we're there, do you know what I mean? We're at the start of leg four. started descending down this hill and it was just grass and I couldn't like I, you know when you're like walking downhill and you've got you've got your feet like at such an angle it's just putting so much pressure on your knees and I've been doing it for like an hour and I was sick of it I was just like fuming that like I couldn't like just release that tension in my legs and then I slipped right and I like landed on my ass and then I couldn't stop myself and I was really mad at the fact that I couldn't stop myself and I'd slipped in the first place so I stood back up again and I started running again and there's all these people like walking up the thing like all staring at me I'm like, what are you staring at and I was fuming and then, and then they kept looking at me and then I kept slipping, right? And then I slipped for like the third time, right? Like feet just went straight on my ass. And I thought, fine, if I'm gonna slip, I'll just stay on my ass then. So then I just started like, I was just like down this hill, mate. Just like, just literally like, 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 I don't know what you'd call it. Just, just, just flying down this hill on my ass, like it was a slide. And then I looked down and as I'm, as I'm doing, all these people just stood there like staring at me, like, what is that lad doing? Like, where has he been and what on earth is he on? And I'm just like, <laughs> just, just, just fuming, like just, just getting myself down this hill. So I was like, oh my God, no way. Saw Johnny, like, head was gone. He was like, right, no, pick your head up. Listen, you can get in under 24 hours. And I was like, no, I can't. He was like, yeah, you can. You can get in under 24 hours. You've got a good group of lads down there. They're all keen. They know what's going on. They know what the plan is. You're not gonna be able to stop at this age station, right? You're gonna have to, like, literally strip off and then run, right? And I was like, 
no, I can't do that. I need 25 minutes, mate. In my head, I had 25 minutes, right? I was like, I'm just gonna sit down and relax. I just needed to relax, have a coffee. Like I say, just absolutely chill it. And it, <clears throat> so for him to say that to me, it just like ruined every bit of morale that I had. I was like, no, I don't have, I don't, I don't want to do that. I do not, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to do like a 10 minute stop. I need to just have a minute, right? I need to have a good few minutes. Anyway, he was like, listen, if, if you if you push through and then you push through at Honister as well, then and again, the thought of Honister was so far away. I thought I've got a whole nother leg to do here, like a big leg as well, it's very hilly. Um, very steep as well. I thought, I, I don't, I can't think, oh, I'm running straight through this onto Great Gate. Because th that meant in my head that I've still got an ultra. I've still got like 30 miles or something or 25, 26 miles, I think it was, like a marathon. About eight hours left. Yeah. So, so like you're telling me that I'm going to do eight hours continuous from this point and I'm not allowed to stop. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Like, I was just, I was just, I was just angry with myself and I thought I don't I don't deserve to even give that an attempt because I've already like like had a, an absolute nightmare. I'm not doing it. So anyway, he got back down and I just thought fine, I'm just gonna come into it, let it wash over me like it is, and just just scram some food and run off like as quick as possible. I had I had an ethyl's cake and some porridge. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it like but it actually made a huge because Johnny's dad just kept I he kept, he was in the caravan, wasn't he? Yeah. And he just kept he kept like putting his head out and going, needs to eat something. Yeah. And then like, and then he'd like come back in and then someone would say something else. And then about two seconds later, it needs to eat something. And then it was just dead. But I remember it being dead funny in my head. I just kept seeing his head pop out. It needs to eat something. It needs to eat something. <laughs> and then, and then Johnny was like, right, yeah, yeah, have this porridge. Then he like gave him this porridge. And then I was eating it. I was like, how did Eccles get on the porridge? I, I, I remember, I think I like, I was sat on the chair and I like, there was like a second where I was either gonna, I was either gonna like go into like a, um, like a bit of a trance and just like sit there for like 10 minutes or I needed to get up. Like there was like an option in my head, like it, it, it came to like a crossroads in my mind. I'd, I'd probably only had like what, four minutes at that point or something. And I thought, right, I either sit here now for 15 minutes or I just get up and I move. Uh, I think I said something like, fuck's sake. <laughs> I just stood up and then moved. Like it was just, it wasn't good. But then I knew that in my head I need to snap that elastic and like, and, and get back into that, right, I can run for seven hours, I'm, I can run. I don't need to walk, like what are you doing? And as, as long as I like can maintain that and I, and, I, and I just needed to get past it once, right, I walk the uplines, I stomp them inclines and then I run every other section, run the downhills, I run the flats, that, need, that needs to be what I do. We climbed over this fence to get up U Barrow and um, I, so like James was on one side and AD was on the other side and I like put my leg over the fence and then my foot slipped and I just completely decked it face first over this fence and like all the boys were just like, uh, 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 like it was, it was just like, right, this is how the leg's gonna go then, isn't it? <laughs> Their boys had done so good, like they were absolutely phenomenal. AD was like, I can't, all three of them just did exactly what they needed to do. They understood their role and they just did it to like absolute perfection. AD like force fed me like throughout the whole thing. I, I felt so regenerated by the time, it was like he'd fed me that much and James had paced me that well and Tom had nabbed that well that by the time I got to Honest, I didn't even need to stop, I didn't want to stop. I wasn't asked, I could have just continued straight on. He was just on one, he just wanted to like absolutely, this is what I mean man, like that level of dedication, it's just unbelievable, like he was, he, all he cared about in that moment, he ended himself just to get me what I needed in that situation. So then the plan was get Tom down into Honister, 
sort the things out that I needed to sort out so that I didn't have to like stop. Um, and then, so that's why he went ahead and he came like, came running down before me. Thank you.